Dear viewers, good day and welcome to today's series visit. And at this point my sincere thanks for all your letters and, above all, that this show is filled with so much life. That's always nice and it is also nice to respond and to be able to know from you that I should position an advice or a hint at this point, which may and can help you. I have a request from Brigitte here. Brigitte is from Germany and thank you for writing. You are 58 years old and have very severe problems with your vestibular system. I feel a very strong pressure behind the ears and it seems to swell a bit and then I also feel a cold liquid in the ear. You write that it can happen that you can hardly move out of bed for several days, because you can't actually bring yourself into the upright position. And sometimes the eyes have a little trembling. Your nausea within the scope of this event is then quite large and the auditory nerve transmits the sound differently than you are used to. You have the feeling that there is not enough space for more stress in the brain. The tinnitus is very loud and the dizziness is something that accompanies you in these acute phases. You have herpes again and again. Observe that especially under these herpes attacks, cold sores, again and again these conditions become worse and your urge to investigate the question has always remained unanswered, or one would not attach importance to this process. And so you're kind of trapped in this situation at the moment. Thank you very much for this letter and I would like to be able to explain my view of things to you. Although of course I am not an ENT doctor, but I think your observation is very correct, because I approach the subject more from the other side. And we also always have people who at that moment are of course suffering from many as disease, many are lived in 1861 and this condition is named after him and maybe I should start by explaining a bit what we are talking about here. We have a so-called outer ear which you can see. We then have the middle ear, which is separated by this so-called eardrum what we doctors can judge when we look inside, then we see this membrane and behind it we also have our inner ear. This is a very, very difficult fine organ, which is usually treated in a so-called otitis, in the case of an inflammation of the inner ear, very quickly today and repeatedly, even in children, with antibiotics, to prevent permanent damage. I myself only used the antibiotics at the beginning, then it was actually very easy to treat a middle ear infection differently but I'll come back to the topic now, how do we actually hear? Because noise is, of course, something that we humans also experience as part of the entire transmission, these are vibrations, this is the sound, it can, when it's just over 85 decibels, that is the unit carry out major disturbances in this hearing or sound transmission. More than 120 decibels would really damage your hearing. If for example we take such a toy pistol and hold it no more than a meter from your ear, it's 180 decibels, that's unbelievably high, too much for our ears. And of course we have about 70 decibels on a thoroughfare, a main street, that's not so far from 85 decibels, where hearing damage can occur. 
120 decibels even with a whistle at a distance of 1 meter. This means that noise is also an unbelievable stimulus level for the coordination of our hearing process, which should not be underestimated. Or in the context of such constant noise exposure of course, the system can adapt to these things again and again. The stimulus comes, so the outer ear is the so-called sound conduction apparatus, so the sound wave comes, that is also the spoken word. The spoken word is far from what I capture, that's just a sound at first and this sound reaches the eardrum. This triggers an oscillation and transport continues via this oscillation, via hammer, incus, and stirrup. This is already on the side of the sound receiving apparatus and is then forwarded to the inner ear and there we have the so-called cochlea, that is what makes up this organ of hearing and there is a fluid in it. And this fluid is the so-called endolymph. And it's always sloshing back and forth. It resorbs, it has to fill itself again and again. But it also needs a certain pressure gradient, that uninhibited here in the cochlea it always removes a good drainage. And if I now, for example, have a disorder in terms of this endolymph, that it is not always well reabsorbed or stagnation occurs in the area of the lymph, this inner ear, it also correlates with our balance, whereby the balance is not only dependent on the integrity of the inner ear, but the balance is of course also held by my eyes, by my eye muscles, whether my eyes run in sync, whether I can fixate on an object, or via my feet, how is the foot position am I overwhelmed? Do I have a so-called valgus varus foot, that means is my normal posture, they say, my posture off axis backwards or to the side or forwards or a scoliosis, these are all things that play a role whether I stay upright or whether my sense of balance is disturbed. But here in the sense of menia, we now know that it has to do with that the lymph and the lymph fluid here have a resorption disorder, so that high pressure builds up, which of course can also be caused by an inflammatory process. And this inflammatory process of course, what if we feel inflammation, whether you hit your elbow now or you have an inflammation of the elbow? inflammation from the wasp sting, what happens? There is pressure, there is swelling, because there's an inflammation that gets fluid into that area and that's a quite normal, acute inflammatory process. And now the observation you write is interesting, that you say that you have the impression that you may also have a herpes disease because you keep seeing that flare up of the cold sore and on the other hand you can sometimes more or sometimes less recognize the matter in relation to your states of balance. And now I'm going to ask you to look at this next slide. There is a study and there are a number of studies alongside this study at PubMed so if you want to deal with this topic very intensively, you can find a lot of information there, because it is known that herpes viruses were extracted straight from the ganglia of patients and, especially in the case of menia, many more experienced reactivation than in healthy, in people who do not have a vestibular disorder.
And that's an indication, that's a very big indication. And I ask you that you will investigate this matter very much and someone who can actually prove herpes reactivation is a colleague for microimmunotherapy. If you Google microimmunotherapy then you can surely see Germany's list of therapists. You come from Germany and then you can get in touch with such a colleague, because they will clarify whether you have a have herpes strain that is mute, whether you have persistent herpes reactivation or have a persistent herpes strain or a reactivated one. And a reactivated herpes simplex strain, for example, is the cold sore. What does it matter? It also swells, it becomes a cold sore and this can happen to all internal mucous membranes as well. But that is, if it's somewhere else on a physical level, maybe in the symptomatology and maybe also in the drama not as dramatic as in the inner ear. Many as disease is just a name and what you do by taking high doses of cortisone then does nothing but decongestion. That means that menia is sometimes really just one-sided. It can also be just once and it can occur again and again, but as long as you don't give up, to understand why it occurs, I don't think you can say that you have to live with such a disease. At this point it is very important and that is where the microimmunotherapy has of course very interesting medicines which indirectly return the herpes viruses to inactivation, but that is a matter of my own immunity. And one's own immunity is determined or can be modulated by these two L-herb antivirals for example. It also exists against shingles, herbzona, 2L-zona, but this is an interesting point which you can then use, but the colleague for microimmunotherapy will discuss this with you in detail. First you need this analysis and that's very valuable advice, because behind it there must be something that triggers this state of reactivation. And that's a lot of things. So today we see that viral processes go into reactivation through psychic things. Why does the ear actually look like the kidneys? But what if the kidneys are weak? And the kidneys are an organ, when they decrease in their detoxification capacity, then they also decrease, for example, when the flow of my feelings is no longer given in my very very private environment. When I live under a tension, when I live under a strain, when I live under a conflict that weakens me right here. If maybe, on the bladder kidney meridian I have dead teeth. These are all things that weaken the kidneys in their performance. Why is it impossible that just as a menia developed over a herpes reactivation, because on the other hand I'm really weak on this point. Therefore, in my opinion, a holistic dentist is always required and in demand here. And a therapy also out of this reactivation that would be ozone therapy. Ozone therapy just may be near you, for, the small ozone therapy, it can also push back a lot of the reactivated load. Ozone has an antiparasitic effect, improves blood circulation, antiviral. And then, when the diagnostic is completed and the diagnostic is not completed, 
by calling it Meniere's disease or tinnitus, but if I now clarify all these processes in myself chronologically. And that's why it might need the ENT doctor at the moment who will ensure that. But the path has to start now, to recognize how I can deal with this clinical picture, or how I can get out of it. Because then I'll do other things from the topic tomorrow. Because herpes viruses are responsible for many processes and I do not share the opinion at all that you cannot do anything with a herpes infection. Think about how you get shingles all of a sudden after a trauma or an accident or whatever. That is not possible that I can't get shingles out of nowhere in the full force of my performance, my zest for life. Well, deep down, processes must now slowly derail. And if I then have shingles, these are also herpes viruses, but herpes zona, that used to be the varicella disease, chickenpox, this is not the simplex. But these things they only arise if my immune readiness goes down to the deepest basement, even just for a fraction of a second, Herpes reactivation can occur and these processes can be handled. So one must not say under any circumstances that we only have one alternative to vaccinate ourselves against something but please stay relaxed and follow the matter really well, to then also get a certain, let's say relief. I still recommend DMSO, DMSO in 3%, that's like eye drops for the mucous membranes. To use them simply antiviral, antibacterial, stimulating blood circulation, regulating the lymphatic system. And apply them regeneratively. You can also drip the eye drops into the auditory canal as far as I'm concerned, so that these processes are always well maintained. The other thing is, Peter Kelder has written a very nice book about the five Tibetans. I quote that a lot because I just think this book is so great and the first exercise of the five Tibetans is, to stand and just turn in a circle, so just like that around your own axis to the left and then afterwards to the right. That's something, I have to tell you, you won't succeed right away, five, six times, you have to train more each time, because then of course you also have a dizzy reaction sooner or later. Please don't fall, don't overdo it, but practice it. But why? Because exactly at that point you keep a circulation in balance and that can be an unbelievably good long-term stability also in the inner ear and especially in the context of the task of the inner ear for the endolymph. That's why I say this. The other nice advice to do a lot of good for the ears is, not only to pay attention to the kidneys, but we also use ear candles in the clinic. And the ear candles, these are 20 to 30 centimeters long cones, they are actually made of beeswax and cotton gauze, they have essential oils and plant extracts in it and you can easily lie on your side. So this is created by lighting the ear candle at the top, then also such a gently warming air, which then also gets out within this cone and thus also regulates the mucosal defenses. It equalizes the pressure and also regulates the tube, which is the connection between the sinuses and the ear. also rises into the sinus, so the sinus is here, not only through the eustachian tube. 
And that's a very nice, relaxing and beneficial therapeutic procedure, to simply do something good for our ears in a very balancing and very relaxing way, but at the same time in a regulatory way. And finally, of course, all good sounds are good for the ear. Everything loving is good for the ear. But never look at the ear in isolation from us, but also allow the body that perhaps at its weakest point it tends to have a disease here, or this disease right here. I just want to bring you closer to this context, that you don't have to chase from attack to attack, or rather it's also a real fear and worry. And to understand the body of course, that it needs help, well beyond the ear. Finally, a very small tip from my side. I may now ask that the common yarrow be shown to you. The common yarrow grows at the edge of the meadow. Common yarrow is a plant that sheep always eat when they are sick. That has been observed. In German, this is even depicted in the name. And this plant, the Achillea millifolium, has a flowering period from June to September. And it is a very interesting plant. It has such a wooden stem, but then it branches out into very, very delicate little flowers. Sometimes it also blooms in rosé. And it actually wanders through our meadow borders and we can see and use yarrow all summer long. And I say this because the yarrow is such an interesting plant. And there are also many people they suddenly feel so completely unstructured in life. That means something breaks into them and they can no longer sort the whole thing, no longer stick together. And that's when yarrow helps. Yarrow grounds. At the moment when I have to endure a major conflict problem, when I need to find myself, when I'm torn inside by so many opposites. I'm also thinking about the last few weeks, months, where I might have my focus on things but the other doesn't. But that's important to me. I have to make a decision. I have to let go. I have to leave that too. I have to learn to accept it or I'll tear myself apart. That could be the yarrow. The yarrow centers me again. And the yarrow can give me such a clear new orientation. My perception of life changes my body chemistry. And the yarrow has a big impact on what I had to keep so emotionally with me. For example the liver, our organ with an incredibly large functionality for the entire organism is thus slowed down, weakened in the provision not only of its digestive enzymes, but for hundreds of metabolic processes. That's where the yarrow comes in. I try to stand with both feet on the ground again. I'm trying to center myself again and I'm trying to reconnect with the sky, but also with the earth. And I love this plant because it represents so much stability. It can help me to find my own way again, which was pretty, pretty shaken up in between. It can help me to let go, not only to leave it but also to come back to inner peace for me. And then there are a lot of other functions. Yarrow makes our digestion more active again. It clears our senses. 
It is particularly interesting for menstrual problems. It has a relaxing effect. It has a bile stimulating effect and it also has an appetite stimulating effect. When digestive forces say goodbye through a mental stress, then I no longer have an appetite and then of course I slowly get into such a lethargy. Somehow I don't enjoy anything anymore and I've lost something. For me there are no weeds, but they are all beautiful, beautiful plants that you just maybe should see with a new look, to use them for yourself. Both in original tinctures, there is the company series, but also in fresh plant juices or yarrow tea or whatever you like. But sometimes the solution is so close and I think that can be a good support and help in many situations. With this in mind, I would like to thank you very much for your time for your attention and for everything that makes this show possible for us together and I'm really looking forward to next week. And until then I remain with my very best wishes for you. All the best. <laughs>